Yes, the title of tonight's lecture is The Rise of Internationalism. And we can see that the world is getting more international. Uh, I think especially the internet makes the world more international. And all the satellites with all the international television programs and all the business world and actually also all the refugees and all the uh, immigrants and, and all the business world and you can see the world is getting more and more international. And I guess in all countries there are individuals who are against this internationalism. They would prefer to be more national. And I guess in most countries there are also political parties who want more nationalism and less internationalism. So the question is if you can fight against the internationalism. Martinez claims that um, the evolution takes place by certain natural laws and that he was able to experience these laws and when you know the laws of evolution you can also predict the direction of the evolution and you can predict the result of the evolution and from that standpoint Martinez guarantees it is impossible to stop the international evolution people can be against and they can fight it all they want but it is impossible to stop this international movement it's also interesting to see in some Muslim countries, uh, maybe in China or North Korea, they try to stop international television. The citizens are not allowed to see international TV chains. They try to stop the individuals to have access to the internet. So they are sort of trying to stop this international. In Denmark there is also a political party, uh, Dansk Folkeparti, Danish, uh, Danish party and they have, for them there is a very big program that they want more nationalism in Denmark and of course there are a lot who want that and people are allowed to think what they are doing and fight for what they want but it is impossible to stop this evolution Martinus also talks about that the planet Earth is a living being so we single individuals have <coughs> have only a little influence on the evolution of planet Earth. But he also speaks about the solar system as a living being, that the Milky Way, our galaxy, is a living being. He is talking about there are macrocosmic forces that are working with our planet Earth. There is a macrocosmic willpower behind the evolution here on planet Earth. So, I mean, a little mosquito cannot stop a hurricane. So in the same way single individuals, single political parties, they cannot stop this evolution towards internationalism. We are in a very interesting place in the evolution. And Martinez talks about a spiral cycle with six different planes of existence, six kingdoms. But uh, here in the animal kingdom is the biggest change in all the six kingdoms during the evolution. Uh, in the animal kingdom, we start out as 100% selfish or egoistic living beings. And at the end of the animal kingdom, we will become real human beings who can practice neighborly love, or brotherly love, or unconditional love. So it's really a fantastic change. And there are laws for this change. And um, after World War II, there appeared a book with the title The Anatomy of Peace. The Anatomy of Peace. I've not read the book, but I think it's a good title. <laughs> and for that reason, I, I've stolen this expression and would like to talk about the anatomy of war and the anatomy of peace. Because Martinus speaks about living beings in the animal kingdom as single polled living beings. There are male beings dominated by the masculine pole and female beings dominated by the female pole. So they are 
uh, purely single problems being beings. And this single problemness is the anatomy of war. Because there is a lot of fighting and war in the animal kingdom. And how can you stand it? Why, why, why don't the animals give up? Why don't human beings give up? Why shall you have all this fighting and conquerings and uh, competition and wars and so on? Couldn't, couldn't we uh, avoid that? Well, how can we take it? And then Matthias explains that the biggest light in the animal kingdom that is to make together with an individual of the opposite sex because then you will become a complete being and in the, the copulation or in the, in the sexual act male and female sort of met together even in the bible they talk about man and woman uh, becoming one flesh and in, in this uh, and then there you can experience the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit. And this light is so strong, it is the highest inspiration in the animal kingdom. It's so wonderful to fall in love and meet uh, a partner of the opposite sex because then we meet together and can experience the light and become a perfect human being. That means that you are not sovereign, you are dependent on the opposite sex. That means that you should have access to the most beautiful uh, individuals of the opposite sex in order to experience the light or in order to become happy. For that reason, there is a big competition, there is a big fighting. So, um, this single boldness is the root to all wars. And in the animal kingdom, uh, if the males are fighting against each other, it is the strongest that win, and they can take as many females as they want. But uh, we are not uh, animals anymore, or uh, partly, we are partly animals and partly human beings. But now we are not fighting the physical force, now we are fighting the economical force. If you have got a lot of money, if you are very famous, uh, then it's easier to get access to the beautiful individuals of the opposite sex. So then there is a fight about becoming. I'm becoming uh, a little uh, uh, bee or fly that is disturbing me a little bit. What do you want to say, my dear little friend? Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a little bit distracted by this. A little bit biting, a little bit. Um, a lot of money you've got to go. Yeah, so. We're fighting about the money and and position and honor. So for that reason, this single pole state is the anatomy of war. And Matthias has a beautiful definition about nationalism and internationalism because we are human beings and we can be selfish and egoistic and we can also be altruistic. And uh, in the same way, you could regard the different countries on planet Earth as individuals. And then, there are some countries, they are very much into their nationalistic business. They want to be isolated, they want to keep their nationalism. There can be other countries, they are more into international com communication, international cooperation. And then Martinez says that nationalism, is the selfishness of the nations. If there are countries that are very nationalistic, they are sort of very selfish or very egoistic. But if there are countries that are unselfish, altruistic, they are very international. So internationalism is the altruism of the nations, and nationalism is the selfishness of the different nations. And um, the problem is that uh, there is a partial love. You have favorites, and of course, with this single partner, your partner, then you, you, uh, your partner is your favorite. You are, you are partial. You prefer one for another person. And that is also the, the anatomy of war, the, the anatomy of peace. That is the double partnership. 
and the double bowl uh, living being is totally sovereign because it's not dependent of another person in order to become happy. Because it's a complete living being, it has both both poles in itself, and for that reason, a double pole living being uh, is not dependent on possessing or um, to monopolize another living being. And a double pole um, living being is totally impartial. There is no favorites. If, for example, there is a couple, they have got four children. Maybe the parents love them. The three are the kids, but the fourth kid is, uh, is a little gangster, so they don't like him. Uh, it's, of course, very nice for the first three to be loved, but it's terrible for, for the fourth one to feel my parents don't love me. And we know today that's so destructive. So it's good to be preferred and experience love, but there is a backside of the middle. So it's always leading to something bad if you have favorites. You can only solve your problems if you are totally impartial. And uh, gradually, now we are one and a half poles. And um, in the same way it is with the countries, are you only interested in things that are good for your own country, or are you also interested in cooperation for the benefit of other countries? Uh, can, can you, um, will you always be, uh, stay um, partial and love your own country? or will you also start to be interested to help the other countries? And personally, I must admit, uh, I'm very interested in sport. Uh, I make a joke and say I only have two interests, that cosmology and sport. Or put in other words, I'm only interested in peace and war. <laughs> <laughs> and now I guess in, in 10 days or something like that, the Olympic Games in Beijing in China will, will start. And I guess there's a lot of people who will uh, uh, watch television. And normally, you have a favorite. You, you want some person to, to win, some team to win. I mean, sport is totally uninteresting if you don't have favorites. If you love them, all people the same, you're not interested, it doesn't matter. Who cares who wins? But, but if you prefer your own country for other countries, if you prefer certain persons for others, then it's very interesting with, with, with sports. So for that reason, you are, in a way, um, very nationalistic when you uh, are uh, practicing this kind of uh, partial, uh, partial love. But the question is, how much can you do? Can you go out in the world and work for peace in the world? Can you work for internationalism? Can you go out and make a difference? Can you go out and change the world? And uh, many people are getting a little bit uh, disappointed when they hear Martinez answer. For in, to put it very shortly, Martinez says, you can't change the world. You can only change yourself. And uh, I know um, there are people who they love to go in demonstrations for peace and they are peace workers and stop uh, using atom bombs and they're doing a lot outside there, but it's impossible to change the others. There is also a person who has called Martinus cosmology for the most inconvenient theory in the world. And I guess for two reasons. And one reason is, due, due to the karma law, you are yourself the cause of all your problems. You cannot blame the others. You are always the cause yourself. And if you want to get on in evolution, you have to make a lot of experiences. And when you experience pain, suffering, problems, then you develop your compassion. After that, you can feel with others, and then you become more humane. So the road towards perfection is experience of sufferings. And that is a very inconvenient theory. I think it was much more convenient if you could sit down and meditate and get your cosmic consciousness in this incarnation. I mean, uh, if it was such a theory, I'm sure there would be many more attending Martinus' uh, cosmology lectures. There are so few who are coming, and I guess it's for that reason. And um, so if you wanted to contribute to internationalism or peace in the world, you should not care about the others. You should really work with yourself and try to work with yourself. And you could do it in that way. You could try to avoid to have um, to, 
to have so many favorites and to be more all loving. In a way, you could say that internationalism is also uh, democracy. If you get some kind of world democracy, you will get a pure uh, internationalism. But also, if you could get a world communism, and now we even also say a world Christianity. Uh, Martinus, uh, in the fourth volume of Lewis' book, describes Jesus as, uh, as the first and the best communist on planet Earth. And uh, the New Testament is, uh, is the gospel of the communism. Because if you have, have the same attitude as Jesus had, you have really an international attitude. Because if you have some national tendencies, you have some selfish or some egoistic tendencies. And as long as you have an egoistic tendencies and selfish tendencies, you are not a real international human being. But you could say Christ, who was totally dogical, who had this unconditional love, he was really, uh, he had a 100% uh, international attitude. And Jesus, he also uh, spoke that nobody has a bigger love or a higher love than the person who is willing to give his life for others. That means, uh, you can take it literally, he gave his life for others to show the way how a uh, human, uh, perfect human being is behaving. But at a, at a smaller scale, it could also just mean that uh, you could sacrifice something of your own convenience. And that means you are willing to, to give up some privileges, you are willing to work, you are willing to do something for others in order to help them. So in a way, you are also sacrificing a part of your life to help others. Maybe there is a couple and they don't have so much money and one would like it in education, there's not money enough for it. Maybe one of the two in the car say, okay, I can take extra uh, work and then we'll get money for your education. In a way, the time with extra work is also a way of giving one's life for, for the other. And of course, this is the attitude we shall reach at an, at a, an international scale, that we should be interested in helping the other countries. I've very often been asked what does Martina say about, say about the European Union? Because in a way you would say, oh, that's really international cooperation. And a lot of others say, no, 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 that's pure nationalism. Because the different nations will only enter the European Union if they have uh, personal advantages from it. So it's a sort of a club for rich countries. So there are some rich countries, they will enter the European Union in order to get even richer. Or when there are these, these um, elections, they vote, shall our country be a member or not? The individuals are thinking about, is that an advantage for our country? And if it is an advantage, they will enter the Euro European Union. So of course there are selfish and egoistic motives in this international collaboration. 